This is Charles Temple. And this is Pierre Burton. Pierre, I think one of the most dangerous things to come along in I don't know how long is the book and the movie, The Exorcist. Well, I don't really think books and movies are dangerous in themselves. But I think that we're living back in the Middle Ages when you've got people believing in devils. For God's sake, I thought we got rid of devils about two or three centuries ago. We'll, we'll be burning witches next if this keeps on. Each day... <coughs> Tuesday, January 22nd, 1974. Pierre, the reason I said a moment ago that uh, I consider the book and the movie dangerous is because there are all kinds of suggestible people around. Uh, I believe that's one of the reasons why, for instance, you see when you get rash, when you get an occasional uh, UFO report, you immediately get a rash of UFO of reports. No, you got a the rash of devils. The, the thing is, now, the news stories, the news wire, when you look at it, is just beginning to be filled with stories and instances now becoming newsworthy. Uh, the same stories existed before, but now new newsworthy about people casting out demons. Let me just say a tiny bit about this as background that might be useful. Anyone, well, you studied the New Testament. I, as you know, did a very careful study, for instance, of the Gospels and doing uh, my book on Jesus. Oh, I'd studied it for 20 years before that. One of the fascinating things is that every page in the Gospels talks about devils. Everywhere Jesus went, he cast out devils. You never hear about it from the, from the pulpits, or hardly ever. You do sometimes in the, in the more evangelical churches. But it is one of the absolutely dominant themes of the New Testament. Devils and the casting out of devils. Now, the reason people don't talk about it anymore is because most people don't find it in any way credible. But Pierre, you a moment ago sort of scorned it. Let I me tell you, devils, let, let yeah. me tell you, let me tell you that a lot of people, not fools, but people who haven't given it thought or haven't given it examination, are already quite troubled about it. I say to you, that there are, the psychiatrist couches of the Western world are going to be piled eight deep with people who suggestively, and young people particularly, because they're the ones who are crowding into the theaters to see this thing, are troubled by the fact that they have been possessed by a demon. Well, uh, you'll always have people around who believe in flying saucers, the little green men, who believe in witches, hobgoblins, ghosts, spirits, sea serpents, sasquatches, and devils. And things that go bump in the night. And things that go bump in the night. I am quite prepared to believe that there are large numbers of people who think they are devils. I am quite prepared to believe that there are large numbers of people, or a minority of people, who think they are possessed by devils, and that there are other people who, seeing them going through strange convulsions and seeing strange things happen, believe that a devil is inside them and think they can get them out by reading the Bible and producing, uh, 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 going into the exorcism rites. I simply, as a 20th century rationalist, cannot, will not, and do not believe in this nonsense. And I say now, flatly, I think devils are in the Sasquatch area, that they're in the Flying Saucer area, they're in the Little Green Man area, and they're a Hobgoblin area, and the Witch area. They're all nonsense. Well, let me... Uh... I've never heard so much nonsense talked as I have in the last month as a result of this silly movie and this foolish book, The Exorcist. Let me make it clear that I do not believe in banning the movie or banning the book. I have not seen the movie. I read the book. I found it an incredibly badly written and dull book. And that's about all I have to say about that book. What it is, is it's a straight horror book. One of the terrible things about it is, and Tom, very Tom, Harper, Tom Harper in The Star makes a very valid point uh, in his piece on Saturday in The Star, and that is that is the Roman Catholic Church prepared to allow itself to be used as part of a horror movie in which, among other things, uh, a little tiny girl in masturbating uh, with a crucifix uh, injures herself, who vomits bile and all kinds of unbelievably horrid things. Now look, let's look at just at a moment at, at, at the whole question. There is no doubt in my mind, Pierre, whatsoever, that there is no such thing as demon possession. Of course not. But there is also no doubt in my mind that there are very strange aberrations in terms of mental illness which produce very serious, strange, and sometimes inexplicable things at this point in time, as they like to say in the Watergate hearings. And what troubles me about this, and the reason I say it's dangerous, is because, as I say, suggestible people are going to be hurt by it. And it's a very bad thing. I don't believe in banning it either. I just think it's mischievous, mischievous, 
in terms of the pursuit of a buck. And some of the publicity surrounding it is even more mischievous, suggesting that all sorts of evil things happen as a result of making this movie, which is a bunch of nonsense. You can, you can, in, in, over a period of movie making, you can find all sorts of evil things happening in any movie. Well, the you know, producer's denying yeah, that now. Things like part. fires on the set and, and on and on and on and Who on. Who hasn't seen a fire on the set? Let me say that there are certain things in this world which we can't explain. And one is the very phenomena that is being linked with this exorcism and devil worship, as I call it, and that is the poltergeist phenomena. Now, we know that over the centuries, in most cultures, including the Egyptian and the Eskimo, the poltergeist phenomenon has made itself felt. And that is so a, has demon possession. Well, it's a very similar thing, and it's being confused in most of the stories that are written about it. In the poltergeist phenomena, the objects fly about the room or are said to fly about the room. They don't hurt anybody, uh, but the salt cellars and things are lifted up and flung across. They're it. mischievous spirits. Well, the, the poltergeist means a mischievous spirit. There are several constants in this uh, phenomenon which are interesting. It always lasts about two weeks. If an object is flung at somebody, it doesn't hurt him. And thirdly, Teenagers. There's always the presence of an adolescent child in the stage of puberty, usually a young girl, but sometimes a young boy. Oh, yes. but generally, it's a young girl. And this is the real constant that interests the psychologists. And uh, there's, uh, there are several theories about what's causing it. Uh, obviously, it's an emotional thing the child is going through. There's many people who think that the child makes up most of it, and this is quite possible. But there are, there are cases in which reputable people uh, have seen well, things happen. Well, Pierre, let me just tell you, a reputable person who believed in it, and I interviewed him and talked to him on the subject, and that is Aldous Huxley. Now, Aldous Huxley, no fool he, as the saying has it, he was an a, absolutely firm believer in poltergeist. He was a mystic. And Pierre, uh, well, he was a mystic, but you can't dismiss him by saying that. There have been lots of mystics who've been very bright. And I, 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 among. Uh, well, saying me, you believe in it is one thing. Let me, All I say is the phenomena exists. It has not yet been explained. Let, let me say to you, however, that the things, the things said about in cases of so-called demon possession are not like poltergeist expressions. They oftentimes vary a great deal. They do not last for necessarily limited periods no, of time. And confused. there are not necessarily instances of purity. The case, for instance, reported in this morning's Globe and Mail about out in San Francisco, yeah. a, a married couple with a two-year-old child. However, I think the thing that anyone who is who wants to look more at this would be well advised not to read the garbage that was in the sun over the weekend, in which the expert is Alan Spraggett, who, who has made himself a mint talking about all these strange things while pretending at the same time not to believe in them if you really press him. Or the counter-argument by George Anthony, a movie reviewer. Tom Harper, in The Star, talks to people who ought to have something to say about it. And among others, Dr. Gregory Bond. And I would suggest that anyone who wants to read something on it that makes some sense and puts it in some perspective would be well advised to read that. Charles Templeton and Pierre Burton will continue their dialogue tomorrow morning at 10.05. This is CKEY, Toronto.